How do you train the AI to, to know that information? Do we upload spreadsheets and charts and graphs? Like, what is that? How does that work? Everybody wants to use generative AI for real time personalization. It's not a time yet for this. You cannot trust it a lot because of sometimes it can send not very good information. What Stripo does, why it's important for email marketers. How is Stripo using AI to optimize email? Chrome and asking the question is much more important. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dogs and cats, we are hot on the line here with another fellow entrepreneur, Mr. Dubitro Kudrenko, founder of Stripo.email. We got the Stripo man in the house. We're going to be talking email today. We're going to land you in your inbox. We're going to get more opens. We're going to get more conversions. That's what today's about. Dimitro, what's up? Yeah, hello. Hello. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. And hello to all our listeners. Yeah, what's up, world? What's up, people? What's up, all my After Hours entrepreneurs? So let's talk about Stripo here. So Stripo is an email solution. So just briefly explain to me, what Stripo does, why it's important for email marketers. Yeah, you know, email solution sounds like very generic, very common. What we do, we focus on the very specific thing, one task, email creation. So Stripo is email design platform. It's a place where you can create email, professional email that looks good in any email client without any technical skills, and then expert to any system you use for sending. It can be Gmail or Outlook or MailChimp, Active Campaign, doesn't matter. We have about hundreds of different integrations. But where we focus? Only on email creation. And we do it perfectly. The best solution in the world. Brilliant. If I can say this. So basically what I'm using is I'm using uh, Stripo to craft emails, and then I'm going to be inserting those emails into, like you said, MailChimp, maybe HubSpot, maybe your ConvertKit, all those, those other active campaigns. Yeah. But all the, why do I need Stripo? Why can't I just go straight into that email provider and just start typing away? Why do I need Stripo? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, and uh, if you try, uh, try Stripo, you would understand. So if you need to create a good email that looks perfectly in any email client and not caring about all this technical stuff, like how to do round corner for buttons or how to make it um, accessible uh, or how to do interactive emails, if you know what is interactive emails, when you can, can do like gamification emails, when you want to submit the forms inside email, when uh, you want to do some specific things and spend very little time to create email. You know, now uh, email marketers have to think uh, a lot and do have a lot of skills like email coding, uh, integration stuff. With a Stripe, you need to care only about message. So what we're doing, we return marketing to marketers because of now marketer is a developer, the integrator, the technical writer, and with a stripe, they can only think about message and never break the branding layouts, manage permission, do co-editing stuff. A lot of thousands, thousands of prepared solutions, templates, content modules. So Stripe optimizes more than 60% of the time on email creation. You said it reduces the, the email creation time by up to 60%. Yep. That's pretty Sometimes cool. Sometimes even I more. I like that. And so, yeah, I, I know that today we plan to discuss AI stuff. So uh, we even have a solution that, uh, I don't know, you can create your brand consistent email with your ideas, logic, strategy in one click. So bam, and you have your email. You just need to do small correction and export to your system for sending. Yes. Sick. Okay. And, and I'm looking, I'm on the stripo.email website right now. And it's, it's, it's a drag and drop in the HTML email template builder. And what it reminds me of is uh, on my WordPress site, for example, I can write my blog on WordPress. I can create my page on WordPress, but it looks like crap. It don't look good. It don't look good. I don't, I don't yeah. write HTML code. I'm sorry. I, I don't. Like, yeah, my parents tried to get me into coding. 
when I was young, too boring, didn't like it. I would, I was, ra I'd rather be out, you know, causing trouble. So that's, I mean, that's what it looks like to me. So in, in any way on my website, I have a tool called Elementor that I use to, to, to create beautiful looking websites. It's more drag and drop. It's easier. So essentially that's what I'm seeing here on the, on, on Stripo is it's a drag yeah. and drop editor, which I, it sounds like we have templates for too, to save time. Yeah. And it's more than just drag and drop, you know, <laughs> and no, I personally, a developer uh, in my background, and what I see is that marketers hate HTML, but they always have to learn how to do this. And if in your Elementor plugin in WordPress, uh, you don't need to care a lot how it looks in different browsers because of, there is a standard on HTML. Every browser right. supports JavaScript, all kind of modern styles, but in email, it's a disaster because of every email client like Outlook or Gmail or Apple. Sometimes in Outlook, you know, there are so many corporative versions that use sometimes Word, Microsoft Word, and sometimes Internet Explorer engine to render your email without JavaScript, with very limited HTML. And you have to know, I don't know, a lot to build email that looks good in any email client. And you can Interesting. Yeah, I didn't really think about site. that because there's so many different people that are using different emails. E you know, Yahoo, Gmail, Outlook. My dad still uses AOL, God bless him. Um, it's, but yeah, I didn't really think about that before that every email, email client yeah. is going to give a different experience. And not only clients, but also uh, different mobile devices that have an Android application or some custom application. And in email, there is a lot of security issues. And because of these issues, email clients are like, re can they remove your code? They always remove tons of your CSS styles because you can break something inside the application. And it is a uh. challenge. Yeah. And Stripe So how does Stripe fix that problem? It seems, it seems impossible to craft something that's going to look perfect on every single type of format. Right. Like yeah. if I upload to Instagram, it's got to be in a perfect format. It's got to be on LinkedIn. It's got to be a perfect format. Yeah. Everything's got to be a perfect format. You're driving me crazy with your different formats. How could you, I just, I'm kind of curious. How does it, how does it work? Could you open the back door for me. First, we spent about 20 years focusing on one problem. So we put all our knowledge uh, on the ground of our application. You just use drag and drop. And even right. with a standard drag and drop, when I do email, drag and drop in the like elemental blocks like text, image, uh, button, something, I always have a very terrible email. Because of, I don't know why, but when I give this email to my designer, they spend five minutes and it looks good. I don't know how they do this, but all these paintings, margins, all this, I don't know, fonts, sizes, uh, some magic for me as a technical guy. So what do we do? We also have not elementary thing. We don't like idea of drag and dropping standard things. We like drag and drop content items, like uh, our podcast announcement. Just poof, provides the link, it gets the image, it gets the title, it gets description and the button and everything in your brand consistent design that you wrote once by your designer together with him, but you don't need even spend a minute to, uh, to adjust every email accordingly your guideline. Hmm. So it's what we do. How does it, I mean, at the end of the day, Dimitro, if I'm using email, I, I really have, and I know everyone has different goals. Like some people are trying to like get their girlfriend or uh, trying to find a girlfriend. I don't know people that are doing that, but I'm assuming there's people that are e cold emailing to find girlfriends, but I'm, I'm sure they're out there. Anyway, when I'm sending out an email, I have one goal. I want that person to convert. I want them to click the link, to buy the thing, to watch the video, to sign up. That's what I want. How yeah. does uh, how does Stripo or what does the data look like? If I'm using Stripo to refine my emails, how does that impact conversions? Yeah, because of we have thousands of verified templates. There are a lot of techniques how to make it work. And first, just make a clear call to action on the very first screen. Uh, uh, email don't write a lot of text, you just need some uh, brief annotation and the clicks that engage you to follow the next step on your LinkedIn, 
or I mean LinkedIn on your landing page or in your social network or uh, directly uh, to buy something or call you or add you to a friend list, some action. And we have thousands of templates that we already have for best practices you can use for your needs. Brilliant. So it's built, it's built into the, the system itself. What about the AI? You mentioned that you're leveraging AI, you know, in, in, and I think specifically when it comes to writing, AI is a big deal. How is Stripo using AI to optimize email? Yeah, we have a lot of AI solutions, some uh, large language model solutions and uh, open AI, Gemini, and uh, Mijoni to generate images. But, you know, email is a content. And all this uh, generative AI is about the content. But uh, create, uh, using uh, generative AI for creation email is a big challenge because if you cannot delegate some tasks like coding of email because there is no standards for email creation or keeping the brand consistency for big brands uh, where every uh, pixel makes sense. It just cannot do this. It's, on, uh, it's good to generate a you know, subject line, but for generating the simple line of a text, you have to control it. You have to uh, define some rules to reuse it. And we provide the AI solution, for example, for subject line generation. It's easy. You can use uh, Cialdini rules if you know what it is, yeah, They're like a form effect or some urgency or other stuff. So you have your subject line. And you can improve it using AI in some direction, but you can control the direction because of you did some A-B testing, because of you did something, or just improve it with emoji. It's a simple line generation. It's a very simple task. But what if we go down into paragraph? Uh, so when you need to get more information, more data, and using tone of voice, or maybe... Uh, make it longer, uh, look uh, like an expert, and other stuff. And what we go even uh, deeper, and you generate not only a paragraph, but content items. When you have a title, description, image, button, and you have to generate it to promote some content from a landing page. AI good here because if you can read your landing page and provide all consistent information for whole content blocks. And what we did, and we just announced the launch of our big solution to generate all email campaign. Can I give you an example? Uh, every week we're doing uh, webinars like you do podcasts. And you have uh, to announce it in your email uh, campaign. There are promotional email, a reminder emails, post event activities. And all of them use the same information. The title of your uh, session some description, speaker information, time, location, price. And if you have this information, you generate all this up to 10 emails to support this webinar. And you do okay. it regularly. What you can do uh, using Stripe, you can uh, with, uh, generate the strategy, how many emails, what is the sequence, what is the idea of each email. Then for each email, you can agree the structure of email, like header, Announcement, uh, previous webinars, uh, footer. For other emails, you focus on speaker. For another email, you focus on reminder and other stuff. So you agree on a structure. Then if you use this structure and find designs that you already provided for each block, and using this design, it builds whole email campaigns. Brand consistent, high quality, and export into your system in one click. So what you do, uh, an example, just... Uh, prepare the campaign that would support my webinar based on the landing page. That's all. It goes to your landing page, get all necessary information, the speaker picture, and generates whole email campaign. You can see, it, you can change, you can verify and control, which is most more important thing, not just generate something and send to your system. And I want to focus on one important thing to understand AI in emails. So it can do some magic. It's wow effect. But usually I say it like a mom's problem. Uh, when my mom, when I was a child, she, she thought it's better sometimes, it's better myself than ask you to do things. It's what usually happened with AI. 
it can do something, but you have to rewrite this. It has some wow effect, but you can offend it because of a lot of things. Because of maybe the text is wrong, because of some data is wrong, because of design is good, but not good enough to send this from your brand. And you have to rebuild it. So what we do, we do the results that it's much easier to update than rebuild. It's our criteria of definition of that, criteria of success and the quality. So it's what we do. What's interesting to me here, what's kind of exciting, and, and quite frankly, something that I believe that 99% of business owners aren't doing is, is maximizing the power of automated email campaigns. And because and, I, was, I was guilty of this for, of a, of a, for a long time, I would uh, you know, do all my work throughout the week and I would send out one email, I'd spend you know, 30 minutes, write out my email, send it out once a week. But what I've started to realize and what I'm working on with clients now is, hey, we take one action one time and that person's going to get a thousand emails from us. They're going to go through this campaign. They're going to opt into this campaign. And it's going to circle back to that campaign, and circle back to, until they eventually purchase what we want them to purchase. It's unbelievably powerful when it works. And quite frankly, the, the big challenge I think that, that I have as an agency owner and that most business owners I think have is. It does. It takes a lot of time to figure out what is my campaign going to look like. So exactly. Did I hear you correct in that I just kind of tell it this is what I want to do and it'll write it'll take from a campaign template and say, okay, this is what email one looks like, email two, email three, email four. Is, did I hear you correct? Yes. Yes. So what is very important stuff? If you would speak about email gurus, ML experts, uh, they would say AI can generate content like a junior uh, email coder, like a junior copywriter, sure. like a junior somebody. Right. But we cannot trust junior. And I have a big challenge. Can we promote the junior into mature partner? Yeah. How to do this? And there are several ways. One of them is to fill it with a context and keep it controlled. And don't allow he, AI to do the same mistakes several times. And what is fill it with a context? So it means that it has to know everything about your company, about your competitors, about your personas, about uh, your context of email you generate, about your previous system you already sent thousands of email. So and it has to use all this data to suggest you new new variants. And if you agree the strategy of campaign, the structure of it, and design, you can say use this and. The best stuff, uh, another very important thing, everybody wants to use generative AI for real-time personalization. It's not a time yet for this. You cannot trust it a lot because of sometimes it can send not very good information. But Yeah, sometimes this stuff is wonky. I'm, I'm definitely one of those people chasing that, but the way that we use the custom AI is to to give additional like tools and context to me and my team before we get on the call, right? Or before we do, do the thing. So we, instead of starting out from scratch, we're starting out with, we're like 90% there, right? Yeah, exactly. It's the, my approach, everybody doing some email generation stuff. And they say, okay, we don't want to generate email uh, when we only just from the very first minute when you register in a Stripe. We say, okay, for us, it's not important to generate your first email with AI. It's much more important to automate your routine work in your daily base and right. spend some time to configure your environment, add the context, uh, verify your uh, design, agree on all this uh, like preparation stuff, and then save tons of time for your real marketing work, thinking about A-B testing, thinking about uh, segmentation, thinking about some rules that can help you strategically to improve your uh, email campaigns. Because of, at the moment, the human and marketer is the voice of your business, not AI. AI just helps right. you in routine work at the moment. Maybe later it will do all work for you, but now it's just automation uh, of routine work. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I understand that. 
I guess the other part of my question is because the better, one of the things that I a hundred percent on board with is how important your prompts are in getting the better result, the more context, the better, the prompt, the better, the result we're going to get, the better, the writing is going to be. Yeah. I'm actually doing a 52 week challenge. I'm, I've just recorded a ton of videos today. I've been, I'm recording 52 videos on all my favorite prompts, the prompts, the, 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 the really the key terms to get the best context. You can get that at AI update.ai, by the way, you get all those at AI update.ai. But my question is this, it, what is the process for uh, training and prompting in Stripo? How does that work? Yeah. You know, prompt and asking the question is much more important than answer. AI can generate answers for any question. And right. uh, it can do this. And the art uh, to send the right prompt, to ask the right question. And what I found, marketers cannot do this. It's a big challenge for them. They can write some abstract thing and they have abstract, uh, like generic response, which doesn't help a lot. And uh, we cannot teach audience to write the right prompts, but we can provide some uh, standard uh, prompts they can use, like for uh, subject line generation. We already have predefined uh, rules set to improve this subject line based on Cialdini rules. And it suggests you the Cialdini rules and variant. You can understand. So we prepare the prompt. Change the tone of voice. We prepare this. Uh, make it longer uh, or translate to some language. And we have hundreds of different prompts template prompts, then you can use uh, using interface. You know, uh, AI, ChatGPT, and others, it's not, not only one year uh, project. So they released years ago, but it wasn't good to use it till they pro uh, wrote the chat. It's a way when you can speak with it and write the prompts. I think the next level, when it would be I don't know, like a, like a menu when you have uh, good uh, prompts you can choose from the list in your domain. Like uh, how to improve subject line. You have several ideas, what you want to achieve, uh, how, and we have all this context. So we help our customers to write the prompts based on our uh, experience. Like so it's how we well, it's it. all about numbers when it comes to conversion. So working with an organization that kind of knows, hey, you probably want to go this way. This is we've seen this to convert better. And and, and I think that there's a lot of A/B testing too. After working with a lot of different clients, that's what we found is, you know, we can hypothesize, but we need to look at the data and then come back and see what we get. You know, what's what's exactly. converting? What's getting the click through? What's getting you know the engagement? What's getting responses? Who's filling out which survey? You know, all that stuff needs to be tested. Yes, and I can suggest from two variants of uh, the winner, and it can suggest uh, in a pretty accurate, but yeah. uh, it's more accurate, accurate if he knows previous, uh, previous results from your previous campaign. And right. so, are you, how do you train it? How do you train the AI to, to know that information? Do we have, can we upload, do we upload spreadsheets and charts and graphs? Like, what is that? How does that work? So at the moment, what we have in a Stripo, uh, we uh, parsed uh, a lot of emails from brands just to understand the best structure they use from uh, email love or really good emails or other platforms. Uh, and we split into a structure so we understand what works better. From other side, uh, we use the company uh, statistic like uh, this email with this subject line with this preheater has this open rate to the same audience, this click rate and this click map, this button works better than others and we can use this information. At the moment, this uh, thing, we do it for our internal email optimization and we plan also to add it into Stripe. At the moment, Stripe doesn't have any connection with the real-time data, uh, but you can upload it. It's Coming soon. But I assume you have an API integration that allows oh, yes. to connect it with other apps too, right? So I can yes. like automate from Stripo to, you know, convert kit or something along those lines, Beehive. Yeah, we have, exactly. We have more than 100 different integration, but most of that integration is how to save or update email in your list. Like you write an email 
click one button and you have it in your Gmail account and draft or oh, like in that. your MailChimp or ConvertKit or MailerUi. It doesn't matter. A lot of systems. So uh, in the very beginning of our talk, you said like uh, copy paste a result into your system. You don't need to do any copy paste and stuff. You save it and it's updated like you did this save in your system. That's cool. I like that. So basically what uh, Dimitro is doing here is he's making you look better and saving you time. Both things that I think are great. And I think all the men here agree that our wives need you to solve that problem of looking beautiful and being on time. No, I'm just kidding, ladies. My, I know, I know you're, I know you're doing your best to look beautiful. I know it's a, it's a full-time job to do that. And we appreciate every moment of that. Anyway, before y'all log off angrily, I definitely want you to check out stripo.email. Dimitro, bring in the heat. Dimitro, thanks for joining the show today. Any other points before I let, before we uh, bounce here? Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Contact me, LinkedIn, uh, if you will provide the link, if you have any direct question. And thank you again. Super cool. Super cool product. I'm really, I really like it. I really like it. All right. Thanks, y'all. Thanks for joining the show here today. Thanks for subscribing. And uh, yeah, go to stripo.email, connect with Dimitro on LinkedIn. I'll, put, I, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll do you a favor. I'll put a link in the comments. I'll put a link in the description. Yeah. Thank you. All right, people. Peace out.